Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Victor aka Vardanian and today I'm going to be breaking down how I produced this beat inspired by the Eurovision competition and the general pop sound that they've established over many years. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So some quick contests for how this beat even came together. Basically one of my friends reached out and she said that she was thinking of entering the Eurovision competition. So originally I was excited, I was like sure, let's, let's try something out. I had to do some research because for Eurovision type songs, the most important thing is how you arrange it, how you catch the listener's attention, are they still interested, does it connect with the listener. I know these are all qualities that are relevant for pop sounds in general, but the competition itself is just very particular. It has to be under a certain time, I believe it's under three minutes, and the arrangement has to follow a certain pattern. So I decided that it'd be a good idea to just start off simply. All we want to do is slowly build up the song. The first thing that I thought of was just having some electric piano chords. The chords were actually generated by Scalar, which is a great plugin for, you know, coming up with chords, reading the key of the song or whatnot. And first of all, we got a C minor seven, then we have an E flat major nine, a G minor 11, and then F minor 11. So right off the bat, the chords aren't the simplest, and there are kind of two avenues you could take with this. With a lot of pop songs, the producers might just stay with the simple like triads or seventh chords or whatnot. Um, which is going to make it more catchy and easier for the listener to comprehend the sound. But you could also just go for something a little more unique. And I did that with the help of the Scalar plugin. So you can see my processing chain for the piano right here. First thing I did is just EQ it out, uh, kind of clean it up. Uh, later on, you'll see I'm going to automate this piano. And basically, I'm just going to take the EQ and take away way more than 45 hertz because then it's going to be clashing with the bass line. So we want to make it as clean as possible. The second the kick and the bass uh, come in, we're going to take away 132 hertz to make sure that the bass frequencies do not clash with the sub notes of the bass and the kick. But anyways, back to where we are. We're going to do EQing. Then we're adding the chorus effect for some more width. We're doing tremolo for making the sound a little more vibey because it's going to be kind of going left to right. And then we're adding the Oxford inflator, which is just helping the sound be more on the surface. I'm doing overdrive because electric pianos sound even more authentic when they have that drive about them. I am then adding Phoenix verb and stereo delay uh, for making the sound more atmospheric, more spacious. Uh, Phoenix verb is actually incredible for more like live instruments and more authentic sounding ones. And lastly, I have Kickstart and the Logic Compressor, which are both doing the same function. I'm not sure why I used two of them, probably just get the job done with one as well, but I guess I just wanted that extra pump. What's happening is every time the kick hits, this sound is just gonna duck down and it's gonna create that pumping effect where the sound is just wavier, it's just going up and down basically. So the next sound that I have is this flute. The reason for this instrument being here is because me and the singer were thinking of incorporating some ethnic, some national instruments that would actually represent the country that she represented. And so here's what the flute sounds like on its own. And then with the piano. Yeah, the flute kind of has a very innocent sound about it and didn't have to do too much in terms of EQing. Just wanted to remove some clashing sounds um, to make sure that it doesn't actually clash with the electric piano that we have. And then the main thing is just adding a reverb, which is bus one right here. That's my reverb bus. And a lot of the other effects were actually already included. So we have some delay, some acoustic reverb, three band EQ or whatever. And this is why I love Alchemy, the plugin so much, is because it already comes with so many plugins on. So the sound is more or less ready. All you gotta do is just do some final tweaks to make sure that it fits into the mix. So moving on to the next eight bars, we're introducing two things. We have the kick, and then we also have a reverse pad. So let's take a quick listen. Yeah. 
So as you can see, I've done full kick start for this reverse pad sound, and that's because the kick is introduced. So let's take a quick listen with the kick start on, and then I'll turn it off. So to get the actual synth sound, I used ESP and here are the settings. If you want to look at them, it's just a regular pad. The main thing about it is that it's a cell tooth pad. However, I just tamed it down. I did a low pass filter uh, up to about 1.3K. So if I took away the filter, it would sound completely different. And now with the filter. So yeah, the filter is just taming it down because we just want it in the background supporting the other sounds. And then... And then for the second part of the 8-bar loop, I'm introducing this clap sound. So yeah, it's just a cool little clap pattern because the sounds aren't the same. We have the first clap hit. And then the second one, they sound a little different. And then that's, I guess that's just adding more variety. It's not as repetitive. And right before the chorus drop, we have some tom hits, which are the rota toms. They're actually Logic Native. They have that 80s vibe about it. It's just a pop staple in terms of toms and just a nice sound. So yeah, we have all of those elements. And then we have a little riser over here as well. And then all of that is just leading up to the chorus. So the chorus is happening uh, 16 bars in. The overall track length is literally 2 minutes, 45, 46 seconds. So we got to keep it moving quickly. We want to add variety. We want to add excitement. So we're not wasting too much time just getting straight into chorus. And here's what that's going to sound like. Okay, so what are some of the additions that we have? So first of all, we're taking away the electric piano that we had previously. We don't want to make this too clustered with too many sounds. We have this reverse pad that we had before, and now we're adding our main chorus synth, which I produced in Yuhi Diva. And here's what that's going to sound like. So obviously it's doing the, the same chords that we saw previously. And it's a very similar pattern to the ones that we had in the electric piano before. Again, not too much processing, which I found very helpful because it's really all about sound selection. If you choose quality sounds in the beginning, then you really won't have to do way too much mixing. So here's the EQ that I have for the pad. It would sound like this without the EQ. And now with the EQ. So I just wanted to clean it up a little bit, you know, with the low mids, the lows, the bass sound, and then add some more high end for that clarity because this is a chorus synth, so it has to be up top. It kind of has to be in your face. So uh, that's exactly what we achieved. I'm adding a bass as well. And to get this bass, I used the memory mode plugin, which is basically a Moog synth emulator. And here's what that sounds like. So yeah, I just wanted it to be a static, kind of very heavy sub sound so that the listener could feel the low end energy over there. And the patch itself was already a pretty good one. I did some tweaking. I probably played around with the cutoff right here. That's the only thing that I did. And then quite a bit of uh, surgical EQing over here because without the EQ, the sound would just be muddier. There's a lot to clean up down there. This notch right here, the 2.5 dB that we're taking away, we're gonna then boost it in the kick so that the two sounds do not clash together. I'm using a compressor for evening out the sound a little more because there were some peaks that I wanted to make sure we cleared. But at the same time, we do wanna make the sound a little more thicker, a little dirtier in a good way. And that's exactly why I'm using the soft chip saturation plugin. And I'm also using Overdrive. And I'm also using the Logic Bit Crusher. And then I'm also making sure to add some kickstart, which is again, the sidechain compression, the pumping effect on the bass as well, because 
I just want everything to pump, everything to just be in the same groove. The main energy change for the entire track for the chorus happens in the drums. Here are what the drums sound like for the chorus. So I haven't fully unleashed all the drums yet, but we are adding a lot of new elements. For example, this more clickier kick layer for the original kick. So if I take away this layer, and then I add it back in. As we introduce more sounds, we want the kick to still stay prominent. And a way of doing that is just adding that second layer so that the kick can stand out a little more. And then I'm going to be introducing a lot of different clap sounds. So for example, with the original clap sound, I'm adding one more layer, which is this sound. And that's happening with every clap hit. I'm also adding two clap layers panned hard left and hard right so we can get that width that comes with the chorus. So if you're using headphones, you'll be able to pick up just how wide those claps sound. And one technique that I always mention is using slightly different settings for your layers. So you don't want to just completely duplicate them and use the same settings. You might want to use a little more reverb for one, less reverb for the other just use more drive, use whatever it is, so that the sounds aren't completely similar. And those minor differences, they're gonna make the sound even wider. And then we have a snare sound. It's a really weird pattern, especially for a pop song. I'm not exactly sure what inspired this, but in the grand scheme of things, it seems to work out just fine. So, you know, we're just going to stick with it. With the snare sounds, you want to make sure you're clearing the sub so that it doesn't clash with the kick. You could be adding some high end so that the snare could shine a little more. Overdrive for, you know, controlling the sound and then just making the snare even more harder, more powerful. And Valhalla Vintage Verb, that's doing the gated reverb, which is very popular for pop songs especially ones in the 80s and whatnot, but it's a very popular trend with newer pop songs as well. You know, Dua Lipa, The Weeknd, all those guys are using this setting. So without any processing, the snare would sound like this. And then with the processing, and then I just have little hits uh, here and there. So for example, this sound. And then the toms that we had hitting earlier, they're just going to be doing like single hits every now and then. And then another pattern that I've noticed with Eurovision songs is that right after the chorus, you have something catchy. So this part would be like the post-chorus section, which is more of a melody that the listener can remember, something that's associated with being more danceable. So this section that you're about to hear, that's what it's supposed to be. So right off the bat, you can hear there is way more energy over here because for the chorus, we still want to leave some space for the singer to do something over there. This section is basically purely the melody. So we're just kind of going all in, making it sound as large as possible. So some additions are this reverse clap. And the reason I love the reverse clap is because it basically goes straight into the snare and the claps. So it's a really cool effect. And here's what it's going to sound like. And then I'm going ahead and I'm adding a shaker sound and these tambourine type of sounds, the shakers, tambourines. For me, they're a tool for gluing the entire drum bus together because without them, everything just sounds emptier. So the shaker sound, it's going to be panned to the left and then I'm also introducing the hi-hats, the 909 hi-hats, you know, the classic house sound. That's going to be panned slightly to the right, and here's what that's going to sound like. So we have something to the left, something to the right. The main goal with that is to make sure they don't clash, but they still add more variety and more fullness to the sound. And then the last addition is this conga loop right here. Thank you. 
So one more thing that I'm doing is I'm bringing back the Rhodes piano that we had earlier because what I did is I removed the chorus pad that we created with Diva, this one. And then we're just ditching that sound and we're going back to something a little larger because now what's gonna replace this chorus pad are gonna be these ARPs and I have three different layers. Here are what they sound like together. What I really love about these uh, sounds is that each one is playing its role perfectly. So all three together, they just sound very full. So the first one that's straight in the middle, here's what that sounds like. Yeah, in terms of EQing, just taking away all the lows because the piano is already covering that, the bass, the drums. So we really don't need that. I could even take away some more if I wanted to. And then I'm doing full kickstart because that's just adding the whole groove, the whole waviness to this sound. Th then we have the right arp. So that's a different preset. It's not the same sound. Um, the processing isn't too different. I'm taking away some more low end and then just doing some minor stuff over here. The kickstart is still in full force. And that's going to be the case for the left one as well. So the two together, they sound so wide. And then the middle one is just bringing it all together. And then everything together. Awesome. And then moving on to the next section. So you can notice the energy levels drop here again, because the thing about pop tracks and Eurovision tracks, it's really all about dynamics, which is basically how often you're changing the loudness and the excitement levels of your song. If everything sounded very loud, very huge all the time, nothing would stand out. But here we're just following the classical pop song arrangement techniques. The chorus sounds huge, the post-chorus as well. And then we're dropping back into the verse, which is supposed to sound smaller, not as exciting, not as memorable. And there are a lot of repeating elements. I mean, you've seen most of it before, except for this one sound, which is called Orbit Moods. And it's just a quick little bell hit, basically. And then for the purposes of adding more variety, I'm just throwing in this new bongo loop that I stumbled upon in Splice. So it's different than the conga loop that we used for the chorus before. I'm just not trying to be too repetitive, I guess. A lot of processing, as you can see, I'm not gonna go through all of it, but I'm just making sure to clean up the sound and make sure that it doesn't hit in the middle. That's exactly why I'm using tremolo and the kickstart too, just making sure that it doesn't clash with the kick. And then for the second eight bars of the verse, you know, for the drums, I'm just bringing back the claps and then the congas. The main thing here are these two plucky ethnic sounds that I got using Spitfire Labs. They're called Moon Guitar. They were also supposed to be similar to some ethnic instruments that the singer asked me to incorporate. And then we also have the flute backing them. So all the ethnic sounding instruments are basically back. Guys, honestly, Spitfire Labs is such a powerful plugin. If you don't have it, it's an absolute no brainer. But yeah, back to the processing. I'm just taking away some bass sounds, the low mids, uh, adding some high end for some more clarity. And then, you know, just some random little stuff over here, tape delay, reverb, and then kickstart. I know I use this a lot, but it really just glues everything together because when you're using the same type of sound, everything sounds similar and it sounds like one full song. And then right after that, we are gonna transition into the pre-chorus, basically the bridge section. And here's what that sounds like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
and then that's just gonna go straight into the second chorus. So some new elements that I've introduced over here, we have this alien synth sound, which is my, one of my favorite sounds for like the pre-chorus sections. <laughs> We got some strings. And then we got a piano sound, which I've added a couple of filler notes here and there so that it sounds more like an actual piano. Oh yeah, and lastly, one more thing is this woodwind sound, some random patch that I found in Alchemy. and everything together would sound like this. So it's just a kind of emotional sound, um, just something a little more dreamy right before the chorus actually comes in. And the technique that I used for creating anticipation for the whole chorus section is playing around with the filter of all of these sounds, uh, the filter and the reverb. These are the main things that I do whenever I want to kind of add some more anticipation. So for the alien synth sound, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm uh, taking away all the low frequencies as it gets closer to the chorus, and I'm adding a lot of reverb. So the closer we go to the chorus, the sound is going to shift and sound something like this. And it's basically the same story with the strings as well. For the strings, instead of doing a high pass, I'm doing a low pass. The sounds are just slowly kind of getting softer. And that's basically ensuring that the transition between the pre-chorus and the chorus is going to be as seamless as possible. Some more additional fillers and, you know, anticipation craters. We have the clap right here. And I've also automated this, and here's what that sounds like. So yeah, that's for the same section. The claps are just getting more reverb. And then once the chorus comes in, the reverb just goes away. And then also, as you can see, I'm using a lot of different effects over the entire song. Um, and they're most prominent for this pre-chorus section because you want to use some atmospheric effects and things to kind of change the setting and then bring them back to the main chorus. So for example, this white noise drop right here. A very popular technique with the white noise drop is putting it in right as the pre-chorus starts and then basically just duplicating it by, for example, by holding option and then just dragging it over. And then you would go to region and then from there you would reverse this sound. And now you're basically getting a fall and a riser at once. So this very same sound, it goes from a fall and now it's gonna serve as a riser. Yeah, basically, long story short, just use lots of effects between your transitions so that it actually sounds like an actual transition from one part of the song to the next. And then the chorus is basically what you've heard before with some different variations here and there. A cool little technique is not dropping into the chorus right away. So here's what the transition would sound like. So you heard there, even though we had the main, you know, melody instruments and the bass playing, the drums came in way later. And that's just a little trick, you know, the listener is expecting you to drop right away, but you're just leaving them hanging and they're like, whoa, what happened there? And then two seconds later, the drop actually happens. And it's just adding that those little unexpected elements here and there. For whatever reason, I'm adding a clock sound. I guess it's just a good filler and just another way of adding variety because for the second chorus, you want to make sure that it sounds a little larger than the first one. So it's with little things like this, like the clock sound or whatever, that's going to make a difference. And then the vocalist as well, 
you might want to add like an, another two additional harmonies or whatever so that this section sounds even larger than the previous one. For this chorus, um, the previous chorus was eight bars. This one, I'm doing 16 bars, and the second eight bars of the chorus are gonna sound like this. So most elements are obviously the same. I'm just, again, adding a couple of more unnoticeable elements. For example, this chorus layer right here. This wasn't here before. That's just basically another octave up from the previous chorus thing. So this is the main chorus synth. And then the new layer is just an octave higher. And I'm also adding three additional layers of keys. Again, just for more variety, just for the background, something new for the listener. And lastly, we have the post-chorus section, which you've already heard. So yeah, one more new sound over here are those uh, cowbells. And let me tell you, this is probably the most tracks I've ever used stacked together. I mean, honestly, there's so much going on right here. We have the piano, we have the reverse pad, we have some strings, we have the three ARP layers that we heard before, then we got the ethnic, you know, plucky sounds, we got the flute, we got the bass, and we got every single drum playing at the same time. And I know this probably doesn't look like the smartest thing to do. But at the same time, when I was looking at different arrangements of historic like Eurovision songs, it's a very similar pattern where they're just giving everything they have for the very ending of the song. And what's happening is the whole song is basically building up for this last moment, the most powerful part of the entire song, where you're just giving everything you have and you're just leaving the listener with a very strong impression. And again, I might have used an additional one or two elements that I probably could have left out. But still, I'd like to think the elements aren't clashing as much. Um, so let's, let's take one more listen to the very ending of the song and how it just completely ends. <laughs> And just like that, we're not doing any outros where the drums stop playing and you just have the chords and whatnot. That can also be done, but with this vibe specifically, we're just giving it all we got and then the music is over, done. <laughs> 